Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ryan Brown. I'm Chief Marketing Officer with XFight Solutions. And joining me today is Josh Moss. He is one of our one of our solution architects here at XFight Solutions. Hello, Josh. Hello, Ryan. How's it going? Good, good. And today we are uh, we have our uh, next episode of Cloud Experts Unleashed, and we're going to be talking about vSAN network optimization today. So yeah, I know you may be thinking to yourselves, how is that tied to the cloud? But, uh, v VMware does run a lot of the cloud, and so for those doing the VMware in the cloud, we wanted to have talk, touch about that, touch up those topics. Uh, but also part of our services at Solutions is to is to help people with their even our on-prem VMware environment. So we want to kind of give some tips for those customers who are doing some things. So Josh, today vSAN network optimization. You and I were talking earlier today about two topics with network optimization. You want to kind of get into our first one? Yeah, absolutely. The first one that we want to discuss today is jumbo frames. You know what they are, um, why you should consider it, um, you know, and how you can really leverage the benefits of them. Great. So, so, so jumbo frames. What are they? So, simply put, jumbo frame is it's an Ethernet frame or a, a packet of data, if you will, that's greater than you know your standard one thousand five hundred bytes in size. Now, why is that important? I mean, why, why, actually, why is fifteen hundred bytes standard? Uh, fifteen hundred bytes. That's just been the you know the standard for the you know the TCP/IP protocol for years, decades, actually. And so the jumbo frames came about to to increase that, to to make it easier on the CPU. Is that is that is that why it's why there's a jumbo frame? Yeah, exactly. So um, jumbo frames, as we mentioned, is anything greater than 1500 bytes. Um, whenever we're talking about vSAN networking in particular, uh, the VMware recognition is to set that to 9000. And and the main benefits whenever you do so, um, it means the, the processor is having to uh, process and you know iterate over less packets. Um, so you get lower CPU utilization or lower CPU overhead. Um, and then another fringe benefit is, uh, you know, depending on your workload, you can also see improved performance through improved throughput as well. Okay. Now, and we were, you're we talking earlier uh, before the show. You mentioned that you you set it for a little bit above nine thousand. What what do you what, what, what do you set your um, your your MTUs at? Yeah, so on the VMware side, the recommendation there, as I referenced, is 9,000. Um, I'd like to set it to uh, 9216 at the physical switch layer, just to you know allow for a little bit of overhead. Okay, so where do you where do you make the setting? So if you wanted to to utilize jumbo frames and, and utilize the larger larger packet sizes, where do you make those changes? Yeah, so first and foremost, um, you have to set it at the physical switch layer. So all switches um, that connect to the servers and you know maybe even connect upstream anywhere that's in the path of vSAN data. Um, second will be your vSphere distributed or standard switch. And then finally, you have to set it on the vSAN VM kernel adapters themselves. Okay, and it's, this, it's the same setting, you just kind of put it in there. You said you've set them all to 9216? Uh, physical switch layer 9216, um, the, the VDS, the VSS, and the VM kernel is set to 9000 uh, per VMware recommendations. Okay, great. And then we, we're also talking about another key area um, with, you mentioned RDMA? Yeah. So RDMA, uh, as the screen shows, it stands for Remote Direct Memory Access. Um, this is not a vSAN specific, you know, uh, optimization or technology. It is, you know, it's an industry standard. Um, but what it effectively allows you to do, it allows, you know, one computer, one server to remotely direct or remotely access the uh, the memory of another machine directly um, without involving the operating system and without involving the CPU. Okay, great. And and how do you how do you set those 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 settings? Is that just, yeah. just, just turn it on, or or what's involved? Yep, you do have to turn it on um, on NV Center. Um, you also have to make sure that you have compatible switches that are configured uh, with the necessary queues. And then most importantly, perhaps, you have to make sure that you're using vSAN compatible physical adapters, physical network adapters. Um, and yeah, those are the three main th three main things to consider. You mentioned compatible switches and network adapters. Mm -hmm. Are are most of them modern ones compatible? 
when when did you start to see the most of them becoming compatible, or or what, what do you have to look for to know that? I think most of your enterprise grade switches out there um, will support it. it. Once you get into you know SMB or home switches, um, the support might not be there, um, but anything within like the Dell S or Z series is going to be compatible um, with, with RDMA. How about the how about network adapters? With yeah, network adapters. Um, double check the the HCL, um, or you know, reach out to us and let us help you guide this guide you through that. Um, but more more likely than not, um, your Broadcom NICs, you know, your BCM fifty seven four one fours, and the latest Mellanox cards, um, the Connect Xs will support that. Yeah, you you mentioned us. We we're talking before the show. But you, you mentioned a kind of an ironic story about some, something that happened to you. Um, the back at another another gig mm -hmm. um and, and you're looking at and, and you said there was a couple of years ago there was a card uh, in one of the servers that was not compatible on one of the adapters on the next can you tell that story yeah so uh this was back in like 2020 or 2021 and um we were standing up a, a new vsan greenfield cluster and uh, there was an oversight on the nick selection um, as far as RDMA compatibility goes. So we ended up having to swap those out for some Connect Xs that, um, that were on the, the vSAN RDMA HCL. Um, and then later to find out, you know, years later, those original NICs actually did get added. So uh, definitely consider the, the vSAN HCL because it is a, a, living, a living document, if you will. It's constantly changing, stuff's being removed and added. So I would just definitely, definitely look at that. So HCL, for those who don't know, is hardware compatibility list. It's what VMware puts out there um, to let you know what's compatible. The very ironic part of Josh's story is that the original NIC he was talking about was a Broadcom NIC. Mm -hmm. So I, I wonder if, uh, as they were looking at uh, looking at VMware, if they put some pressure on, on VMware to say, hey, <laughs> you got to add some of our, more of our stuff to your HCL um, uh, so that uh, we can kind of drive customer selection to our stuff or competitors. Wow, but interesting stories. Uh, any other any other advice uh, on these subjects, Josh? Yeah, um, a lot of these topics, you know, they're they're not easy necessarily, and you might not be able to do the configuration, um, or you just might want a second set of eyes. Um, you know, reach out to us, reach out to our team. We'll be glad to help guide you through the process. Great, thank you very much, Josh. And so this is Ryan Brown, Josh Mosh, Josh Moss. <laughs> um, <laughs> We are, uh, thank you very much for spending some time with us today on Cloud Experts Unleashed and have a great day.